So I'm always going to be open to app suggestions that you guys have for me. I want, I honestly want to hear as many suggestions as you can come up with on applications to try for this channel. So this is a project experiment or what have you for me to try to see if I can go all in on Linux for everything I do. And for someone who edits video for a living, who who does a ton of photography, and then also dabbles in graphic design, dabbles in audio recording and things like that, going all in on Linux has not seemed like an easy thing to do in the past. That's probably a misconception, and that's what this channel is going to do, is prove that wrong to myself and prove that wrong to a lot of people who may think that. So that being said, I want to talk about the applications that I know I'm going to use, which are the most popular ones, the ones that you probably already know, and the ones that have a lot of YouTube channels out there already. But I'm going to go through those, and that way you can kind of see if there's something you know of that I haven't mentioned yet. And then we can experiment together and learn all this together. Like I said before in the previous video, I'm a professional video editor, so I edit video on a daily basis for work. Right now, my work station my editing workstation at work is all adobe so adobe premiere after effects that whole thing i've in the past i've used avid i've used on all the versions of final cut pro and and some resolve mostly resolve at home i never really use resolve in the professional setting but i have you have used resolve at home and actually resolve is my daily driver in terms of editing videos for my photography youtube channel so for the past few years it's been all davinci resolve for my personal editing projects before that, it was Final Cut Pro 10. Before that, it was Final Cut Pro 7 and whatnot. So that being said, I'll start off with the video editing application I know I'm going to use in terms of the free and open source option, and that's Caden Live. This should be no surprise to anyone because uh, this is extremely popular and a lot of people are already use it and have make make videos in all the time. The thing for me is like I said, with a lot of this, with few exceptions, all the software is really new to me. So you're gonna watch me learn everything about these apps, including um, Caden Live. Now, I did mention in my introduction video is that I'm not guaranteed that I'm gonna stick with free and open source software 100% of the time. So that being said, to make this transition from Mac to Linux, I'm going to dabble in some proprietary software, mostly in the video editing space. So Resolve runs on Linux, and Lightworks runs on Linux. So two editing applications that are cross-platform. I can't run Resolve on the system I bought um, on the Linux system I bought, so I'm going to run Lightworks on it here and there. Caden Live is the one I really want to get to know and become really fluent in. Um, from my early experience, experiments, it looks pretty amazing, and I'm really excited to, to get to know that. So Caden Live is my video, will be my video editor, or that's my goal is to make Caden Live my video editor. The other important apps on my Macintosh are photo editing related. And for that, I'm going to most likely lean on Darktable. Uh, I know there are other applications, and I know like GIMP, can edit photos and we're going to talk about GIMP and stuff too, but Darktable is going to be the app I lean on most for photo editing on Linux. And I've started to toy around with it. And so far I'm really, really excited and really, really happy with the possibilities. And so much so that I, I could see me adopting Darktable as my main editor on my Mac as well. So we have Caden Live for video, Darktable for photo, uh, library and photo editing. Now, what do I do mostly after that? Well, I make thumbnails for my YouTube channels and I do some dabble in some graphic design and whatnot. So between GIMP and Inkscape, I don't know why I don't have a GIMP uh, shortcut down there, but between GIMP and Inkscape, I will fill that void. So Inkscape will be uh, an app for my vector ba vector based projects and anything else that I want to do in terms of graphic design. This is me playing around with my logos for this channel, which I'm still not completely, completely, completely happy with. I'm getting there, but Inkscape will be my, my solution for graphic design. 
And again, like the other ones, I'm really impressed so far. It's been really, really fun to use. I'm only a few weeks into using all this, so I'm still super, super new. As, we, as you watch me use it, you're gonna see, gonna see me stumble, try to find things. That's gonna be part of the fun of this channel. And uh, I'm always looking for tips and tricks. I will look out videos, but if you guys, if you guys ever see me doing something, and you have a tip or a trick, please let me know. Let me open GIMP just to make sure that I. I thought I had the two version 2.99 on here, but I guess not. Either way, yeah. So GIMP is uh, GIMP is something that I will use as well as my photo editor, kind of like my Photoshop replacement, so to speak, or most recently my Affinity Photo replacement, because I was using the Affinity products on my Mac and was enjoying them for for a while. But I never updated them to the latest versions, and then they got bought out, bought out by Canva. And it seems that my days with Affinity, the Affinity products are probably done. So Inkscape and GIMP, and these apps are coming to the rescue in perfect timing. I have Blender installed. Blender doesn't replace anything, because Blender has been my 3D app of choice for 20 years, um, because I haven't between two things, I haven't found a need for anything more for what I do. I'm not a, a super advanced 3D modeler or anything like that. Also, the capabilities of Blender have grown so much that I can't see me needing anything more than Blender ever. Uh, so Blender is will be my 3D application of choice, my motion graphics. A lot of my motion graphics will be built in Blender. Um, title cards, some things like that, but Blender, is an amazing program. You go, you guys already know about Blender. Again, like I said, it's not replacing anything because Blender has been in every computer I've owned for the past 20 years. I've used Blender. Now, with video editing and and uh, graphic design, uh, motion graphic design, and and short film projects, things like that, I have projects where I want to do special effects and and things. There's that aspect, and then there's also a, the motion graphic design aspect. For a while, it was After Effects. Uh, After Effects is obviously a, a very popular tool on the PC and Mac side. Uh, I have a long history with After Effects, so I know that very well. I've used Fusion more recently. Just really starting to learn Fusion. I'm not an expert by any means, not even close. So I don't know for sure how I'm going to replace all that, but it's going to be a combination of all these things. And this app called Natron or Natron or Natron, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Natron is, uh, looks like it's a good compositor, could be a good tool to build some effects in, maybe some motion graphics too, but it seems like a really cool tool. I'm super, super new to it. So I actually don't know the limitations or capabilities of it. But that app will be something I experiment with on this channel. This app, Scribus, my pronunciation is probably off, will be my page layout software. I don't need this a ton, but one of my goals for this channel and for my photography is to create some little zines or magazines. I love zines, and I would love to create a zine for this channel. I just think it'd be fun, and it'd be kind of a cool thing to to be able to or, for you guys to order and we can, I can write some cool little articles in there. Maybe you guys can contribute. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with that. That's, that's a goal for this channel, and this app will hopefully help me lay out those kinds of projects. Beyond that, I have a lot of other things installed. I, don't, I haven't landed on some of the solutions. Like I haven't landed on what's gonna replace Logic Pro for me. Logic Pro is my main audio editor on Mac. I have Ardor installed, 8.4. So I was, I, I was toying around with that. I am looking at other options that look does look like there's a handful of other options. But those apps that I mentioned, Caden Live, Inkscape. Oh, yeah, there, I, did, I did skip one, and that's Krita. Now, Krita would be a digital art tool, digital painting tool. I didn't really mention it because it's not really replacing anything because I, in terms of actually like digital painting and whatnot, I dabble at best. So... Like, I will I will learn this and see what I can do with it. Um, but I'm com I'm completely new to that in general, so that will be something that 
out of the gate. I don't do a ton of videos on, but that is installed and I will be experimenting with that. Beyond that, let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. I have some apps that I uh, will use to consume soft, to consume art, can listen to music, to watch videos. We'll talk about those too because I think those are a, a, an important part of this aspect. I, I mean, of the of of you know being an artist on Linux. Uh, we'll talk about some of these other apps that I decided not to talk about in this video later on. But we have Caden Live. We have Darktable, Blender, Inkscape, GIMP, Natron, Krita, and Scribus. So those are the key ones I'm going to be uh, utilizing on this channel and LibreOffice for any random uh, any random thing that I need for for an Office type suite. Beyond that, like I've already I've already um, uh, have been using Obsidian for uh, my um, my main digital notebook, so to speak. Uh, Obsidian's great, but I also will use um, a Vim setup for just for just my my normal text editor. I might transition from Obsidian to just, just a pure Vim and Markdown based workflow. I'm still toying with that. Doesn't necessarily tied with being the, uh, an artist, but it is tied with. Uh, Linux and and free and open source software and all that. So I've been I've I've been toying around with those ideas too. So we're gonna we're gonna dabble into some of that on this channel as well. But um, since we're here and I haven't done this yet, I should do the you know every Linux channel needs to show you the NeoFetch page. Like I said in the past video, I don't remember the name of the little computer I bought on Amazon to run Linux on but I'll put it in the description. So basically it's just a cheap little like Mac mini style computer um, that came with a, a flavor of Windows that I stripped the Windows off, installed Linux Mint, and it's running on that and running pretty great. It has some limitations because the um, limited video card, but it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna create a whole bunch of cool stuff on it. And this is these are the, the general specs of of the OS and the computer. So you can take a look. But that's it. I just wanted to show you some of the apps I already downloaded and I've toyed around with. Some of the apps I'm thinking about doing more deep dives on in with this channel. So I want your feedback. What do you think about some of these apps? What do you think are some good alternatives, especially for video and audio? Because I think some of the other ones are pretty locked in. I think they're like the lead, clear leaders of the pack in those categories. But for video and audio, I think maybe there could be some debate on what to use on Linux for video editing and audio editing and creation and all this stuff. So I really want your guys' input. So leave it in the comments. And I should have said this in my intro video, but even though I have used Linux in the past, I'm considering myself a pretty a pretty new user. So I'm, uh, just consider me a newbie. Give me some slack if I use the wrong term, say something wrong, um, do something that you would do a lot quicker. You know, give me some tips. I'm here to learn as well. So that's it for now, guys. I appreciate every one of you. I invite you to subscribe and like the video if you haven't done so yet. And keep an eye on the channel. There's going to be a lot of cool and fun videos to come really soon.